Aloha and welcome to Restaurants Hawaii on Think Tech Hawaii. I am your host, Cheryl Matsuoka, the Executive Director of the Hawaii Restaurant Association. And today we're discussing a much needed solution to our employee shortage. U.S. Robotic Services has a proven solution to help our restaurants, eateries, and businesses remain profitable while continuing to provide excellent customer service, all the customer service that our guests and patrons are accustomed to. According to experts, our employee shortage is going to last for decades. Well, U.S. Robotic Services has a solution. The solution? Utilizing technology. I suggest that you allow U.S. Robotic Services, a Hawaii Restaurant Association member, to show you how your company will benefit and increase your profits today. So today's segment's title is Robots Within the Hospitality Industry, The Rise of Service Robots. At this time, I have two guests that I'd like to introduce. The first guest is Ted Davenport, CEO of U.S. Robotic Service. Hey, Ted. Hey, how you doing, Cheryl? Thank you for having Hi. me. Hi. You're very welcome. And my second guest is Gary Dickman. Gary is the assistant manager of Ruby Tuesday Moana Loa. Hi, Gary. Hi, Cheryl. How's it going? Thank you for having me. It's going to be fun. Great. Thank you for joining us. So, Ted... You know, the employee shortage, every business, especially the food service industry, is really having an issue with employee shortages. So let's share with our viewers, you know, what are the benefits of having U.S. robotic services, your hospitality robots in our food service industry, eateries, restaurants, and businesses? Yeah, so, you know, um, years ago, I saw these robots operating in Asia. And a chain called MK out of Thailand had 200, 250 units. And labor's cheap there, and they're not short on labor, but they're short on service. So I went to go to a, a few units with some of their general managers and their, their operational manager to find out what's the benefits of these robots to help my, in my restaurants with Ruby Tuesdays, Giro Kaku. And because I you know, witness one, we, we're, we're lacking employees. Two is how many times employees walking back and forth to the kitchen? You know, how much time are they spending walking back and forth, carrying dishes and carrying plates? Uh, watching how many dishes are sitting on your, your tables for 30 minutes, 20 minutes, because there's nobody to pick them up. Now, in the old days, you had a busboy. That used to be your first job. You went to high school, you're a busboy. I mean, when I grew up, there were busboys. Well, that, that's, that job is gone. So the, the waiters and waitresses are working harder. problem is they get less tables. This actually is not to replace your employees. This is to, to enhance your service, to actually get your have your waiters and waitresses out there serving, selling, and let those robots do the hard work. Let them take the dishes. Let them bring the food out. Utilize them as much as you can. And uh, I think Gary can explain a little bit more because he's there operationally and he knows how they've, they've actually helped an expedited service. So that's kind of, a, you know, in a nutshell. How Thank I you. Got involved. <laughs> well, that's awesome. I'm so excited to tell all of our members about this awesome service that you have. And um, I'm going to invite everyone at the end of this call to, you know, contact me if they'd like to contact Ted also to go to Ruby Tuesday Moana Lua and see him in action. I'm planning to go out there just to see it in action, Ted. I think it'll be yeah. fun, right? So, oh, yeah. Gary. Yeah. Go ahead, Ted. No, no, no. Yeah, I mean, it'd be it'd be great. I mean, you, I mean, at Girokaku in Kapolei, you can see it. You can see how it's helped a table that usually takes five trips to the dish pit when it, a robot takes one and leaves a waiter out there wiping the table. That table turns in five minutes, not 15 minutes. So exactly. witnessing that, so you have to look at the big picture as a restaurant owner. What? How much time is being wasted at the expense of you paying hourly? That's the key. So. Love it, Ted. So, Gary, I remember when the food service employees were concerned that robots would take their jobs and there was pushback, right? No, no, we don't want robots. But according to the Guinness Book of World Records, I researched it before this call, the first waitstaff robots were introduced in 1983. That's almost 40 years ago, Ted. So I'm assuring, you know, that the technology has really enhanced 
<laughs> so Gary, do robots take away our food service employees' jobs? That's the first question. Not at all. And that was a concern immediately when we first got them. But the employees who thought that are now very happy that they are there, but they're not taking anybody's job away. Great. So share with our viewers, Gary, what exactly, which job, I'm calling them the Ruby robots. So which exactly, which jobs does your Ruby robots, or what are they doing in your Ruby Tuesdays? They're doing a lot of things, and they make, first of all, my job easier. If I'm on the expo line and handing out the food and sorting it out, instead of having it sit there and wait for the servers to come back and taking up a lot of space, I can load the robot up. As soon as I see the server come back, I let them know that I'm sending it out. And if I'm if they're not back there with me, I can send it out on the floor because the servers are out on the floor. It does save them time from walking back and forth to get the food. It saves me time from trying to sort it out or at times me bringing out the food and leaving the other food behind. So it saves time on my end. It saves time on the server's end. And as Ted said, also the fact that they're bringing back dishes, that's something that I didn't think they would be right uh, on board with immediately the employees, but they're utilizing that a lot. Every time a, a robot goes out on the floor, pretty much they're bringing back dishes off the floor right to the dishwasher area. It saves a lot of time for everybody, and the customers love it. They take videos of the robots so many days. Every day they're taking videos of it. Some customers have come in and said they're coming in just to see the robots. Their kids wanted to see them, and it's a win-win for everybody. Exactly. That's why I would come in just to see it. You know, I'm a technology girl. Ted knows me. I have a Roomba vacuuming my house. I have a Roomba mopper mopping my house because, Ted, you know, I don't have time to be like vacuuming and mopping. These robots is the solution to our restaurants and eateries. So other than taking the food and, and the meals to the tables and taking the 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 dishes back to the dishwasher. What else are the robots doing, Gary? Well, they're not calling in sick, and oh. they're not on medical. <laughs> <laughs> That's two things. Uh, you know, they like I said, they're very smart. You know, when they if they go down to ten percent in power, which they actually last twelve hours, they actually park themselves, they charge themselves. You know, you don't have to feed them. You just give them electricity. I guess that's feeding them. But that's all. It's really simple, smart, uh, very easy to run for a restaurant, very easy to set up. Uh, the, the robots nowadays are laser. So we come in and we train it. We, we train the robot, the whole restaurant. It can see everything from a person to a corner to a chair to you name it. So it, it, it will not hit nobody. It won't hit your chairs. Uh, it, they just they're terrific, you know. And, and if you want, they can play any kind of music you want, or even talk to you. And if you like, for instance, in Alaska, there was a restaurant called Jimmy's. He was only open four days because he couldn't find people, no matter what. And he had a lot of takeout because he's Chinese and Japanese restaurant, and he had only one person up front. So now he's open six days. The robots are bringing the food out, bringing the, the takeout out. And now Jimmy can sit out and, and greet his customers, greet his customers, sit his customers. So he's back open six days a week. And he hasn't hired, he didn't have to hire any employees because Alaska is very difficult. So that solution was there for him. And uh, he, he really likes it. He texts me all the time how happy he is. So, uh, you know, I, I think in time, people will realize the benefits for both customer and employee and restaurant owner. I, I agree 100%. If I am sitting in a restaurant and I can get my food quicker where the robot just brings it from the kitchen directly to me, I'd be so happy. And as you mentioned, you know, to help the restaurant reduce expenses, these robots are taking the dishes back to the kitchen. I mean, I can just imagine because your Ruby Tuesday Monolo is so large, how many footsteps the employees are now saving versus taking food and dishes back and forth from the kitchen. It makes Total sense, Ted. On top of that, the benefit, because as you know, many of our members are restaurant tours and restaurant owners. You know, these these Ruby robots are not going to call out sick. They're they're not going to write, Ted, come in late. Yeah, and like Gary running the restaurant when he's short, these two will really make up for the time. They're going to work a little bit harder. You know, your but your waiters can take on more tables, make more tips. And their job's not gotten harder. Their job's gotten easier. So it, it, it's really, like I said, it's a win-win for, for everyone. 
So right but, now the, ro the robots are taking the food to the tables, taking the dishes back to the kitchen. What else are the robots doing? You know, that's pretty much their main job is to, is to be a, a busboy and a runner. So really, that's what they're programmed to do. And, and that's what uh, that's all we want them to do. They will, like I said, they, we could put you could put on music. We could put on Goodbye Ruby Tuesdays if you want to, you know, like sing to the customers. They could say it could talk to the customers. They could tell you your food is here, which uh, you're, you're on tray number one and tray number two. Please take your hot food. And we could do that kind of we could turn it like into a waiter if you, if you need be because some people are really, really short or somebody's running a smaller restaurant wants that to happen. Uh, but, yeah, we use ours more for busing. You know, it's, it's busing and, and running. Nice. So, Gary, how many robots do you have over there at Ruby Tuesday? We have two. We named them Kiki and Keenan. We have names for them. And what Ted was talking to the customers is actually pretty interesting because I always sometimes will take food out and follow the robot. And the robot, after the food is given to the customers, will say, enjoy your meal. And I watch the customers' faces, their expression. It, it means something to them. They really appreciate the brief conversation they have. The robot will be moving across and say, here comes the robot, pretty and smart. And little things like that, the customers are just captivated by it. And it also is great the way they are program they will not bump into anything as ted said if there's a person maybe walking or if a chair is sticking out a little bit they will stop and so there's no problem there's no accidents or spillage or anything like that it just works out perfectly for everybody i love it because you, they probably have sensors in them right that can sense somebody walking in front of them or a chair that was moved out of place that's normally not within their path this is fascinating, Ted. I just love it. So we also want to talk about, you know, as you know, um, you're saying restaurants, right? Hotels, hospitals, nursing homes, and other businesses. So how do they get these robots, Ted? Well, they can order through us, U.S. Robotic Services. Um, we represent the Keenan brand. Uh, we have a few other brands that we'll be representing that we'll be doing more of a, we'd say, called sweeping, cleaning, mopping type uh, robots that uh, a lot of the airports and hotels use. Uh, there's, in fact, there's a few hotels here that use those. So we'll be uh, actually adding on a few more brands, you know, and uh, – they can come to us and, you know, we do demonstrations, you know, they can, they can, you know, and I they can go to Ruby Tuesdays, I can go to Giro Cochran and see that for themselves. But yeah, we, you know, we'll help them set up what they need. Now, hey, so how long does it take from the time I place an order for a robot? How long does it take to get a robot? Well, if we have them in stock, we're stocking them in California. Uh, we're going to start stocking here some, if, if it's, if it's stocked here, it can be days. If it's uh, in California, it'll probably take 10 days to get here. And then a uh, setup is about a day. So it's, okay, it's so, very simple. So the setup must be like the floor mapping and things like that. Exactly. We take it and floor map it, um, make sure the system's upgraded. You know, uh, for instance, the new upgrades coming out, just like your iPhone, you know, that upgrade, you, you can, you'll be it upgrade, just press a button and it'll upgrade. Uh, there's going to be a new system called the Bell which uh, for, that uh, if your uh, waiter has an iPhone or a uh, uh, Samsung, it can you can download the app. They'll ring that. You you can ring the you can send the robot by your your app. So if you need table 101, 102, 103 clean, you can send it to 101, 102, 103. It'll come out. You know, so it, 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 you can start talking to the robot with your phone. And that's going to happen soon. Uh, I don't know when, but it will be soon. They're working on that. I love it. Well, like you said, everybody always gets the new firmware updates, right? Just enhanced services. So I can't imagine, right, all the enhancements that's going to happen with these robots. I, it's awesome. You also mentioned in 2023, you, you'll have room service available, a room service robots available. So can you share us exactly how your room service robots will work and how they will actually function in a hotel? Yeah, these, these are um, robots that have four compartments that are in individual compartments, or they can make it two or three. Uh, let's say you order, you're in room 1914, you make your order to the restaurant downstairs. They'll load up the robot. The robot will go to the elevator, call the elevator to room 19, come to room 1914, and will call your phone. And then, you know, the, the, it'll say the robot's here. You'll, you'll be given a code to open up. 
whatever it could be whatever compartment or it could be all compartments and then you press okay and it goes right back to the kitchen for robots that are say let's say an embassy suites and a lot of that's going to be probably uber eats and a lot of the delivery if the if the restaurant's not open it can deliver your food as it comes in so it's not sitting there waiting you're not in your pajamas you have to go downstairs so like i said these are these are more for services you know the, really to enhance the service for the customers so that and then, we are yeah. working with otis and all these elevator companies now to in, integrate the cloud system so that takes a little time but it's it's done in asia and the Hyatt's are using them the westerns are using them. a lot of people are using them only in america we have not started so we're going to be starting hopefully in Fresno this week. <laughs> nice, Ted. And as we mentioned, you know, the whole underline is with our employee shortage, with us strapping for employees, it's been so difficult. This is a huge solution, Ted, to help yeah. not only restaurants and, like I said, hotels, hospitals, nursing homes, and other businesses. You know, people just need to think, how, what is the repetition? You know, what is it that their employees, I mean, even in a warehouse, right, going to pull a product, send it to the will call, pull another product, send it to the will call, even in warehouses. I can totally see this application working, Ted. Oh, yeah. I mean, mail anywhere, anybody has big mail rooms. Hospitals need deliveries between floors. Uh, it, you know, food delivery, nursing homes that, that are people just said, you know, you look at time of people walking. And that's what you're trying to save, you know, it's just saving time, saving money. That's all it's about. And, and for us, as, as a solution, we teach the solution. Me owning restaurants, I understand it. That's how I got involved with this. But now I'm understanding the waste of time and the lack of employees. That's where you have, you could sit down and go, ah, it's just going to get better. Well, it's not going to get better unless you do a, you find a solution. So that was it. You know, doing this makes Gary's job so much easier and my employees job so much easier and it, it, it makes the customer so much happier so that that was the solution and i totally agree it's like i mentioned you know in my house when you come to my house i've got the roomba and the map mopper and everything electronic because you know i don't have time to be vacuuming the house but i just turn it on when i'm you know washing dishes and it just finishes by the time i'm finished washing the dishes so i love, love it so the burning question that I know many of the restaurateurs will have, Ted, is what is the cost of a robot? And do you have like leasing programs? Yeah, the, the cost is the first robot is six. The, well, let's say we call it the W5, which you'll see at Ruby Tuesdays and at Kirokaku. Those are well, 16500 for the first one. Then it goes down to fifteen five, and then it's it's fifteen for the third one. And the fourth one, it's just, it's 15000 per. You can lease them, and we're actually setting that up now with the leasing company. So, you know, that it's just like leasing an employee. Uh, but, yeah, you can lease them because, you know, somebody come out with, um, you know, Thirty, forty, fifty thousand dollars. Maybe they don't have that kind of money, you know. So the, the leasing program might work best for them. I agree, and leasing makes sense because, as we mentioned, right? You don't have an employee, so it's that when you look at the salary that you would have paid an employee, along with the medical and all the benefits, and the leasing amount for a robot. Oh my goodness, it just makes sense. It absolutely does. It's going to put more money in the restaurateur's pocket. And that's the key. That's what we're trying to do. I mean, we're a dying breed. If we don't, like I said, find solutions. You, you know, don't don't think it's just going to come out of a cloud. It doesn't. So we all got to work together. And I, and I thought this would be something I could contribute to uh, the restaurants, not only in Hawaii, but all over. And started just with a Hawaii in mind. But um, we've been getting calls from everywhere, Florida, New York, Chicago, Texas. Uh, we're headed up to Fresno to a casino. And uh, yeah, I mean, it's just, it's amazing what uh, people now that they can get it, they, they understand this, that you need solutions. So. I uh, love well, it. I've, and especially, like you said, if anybody is doing the same walking, you know, that same walking trail every day, right? Think about your employees that keep going back and forth from warehouse to front desk or nurses from the nurses station to wherever they have to go to the supply room. I mean, just constantly, it's going to save so much time and it's going to save your employees, right? So yeah, that makes it, total sense. That's true. And think about people, I mean, and everybody's experienced this. You go and you sit down, you get a, you get a drink from the, the waiter 
and then he takes off and you don't see him for 20 minutes and you know you drink you're, you want another beer or something you know you're thirsty you're you're you just want another drink and you're waiting and waiting and waiting because there's nobody out there to get their attention that's why this keeps it keeps your waiters you know you know right there in the restaurant not in the back so if, if you really if, if a restaurant tour wants to go and look how much their people are walking back and forth how much wasted time that is and how much their customers not give the experience of been able to order more you can you watch your sales go up watch your drinks go up it, it, it makes a difference so. I love it. I love it. So, Gary, is there any other comments that you want to make about how these robots are working? Kiki is working in the Ruby Tuesday Moana Law. Yeah, I'll give an example of last night. Last night, we had reservations of 15, 15, and 20, and they all kind of overlap. We had a walk-in table of 15, so we had a lot of orders coming out at once. I could load up the robot, and this was one of them going out on our lanai, and it went out to the door. The server met them there, and it just saved so much time. They were able to get, the customers were able to get their food right away while it's still hot. It saved the server time. Instead of coming back into the kitchen and sorting it out, it's already sorted out on the robot in order to the split we have the order split. So it saved the server time. It saves me time, as I said, because I don't have to bring it out if it's sitting there customers are getting it right away it clears up space it saves time it's again it's just a win-win and last night it really proved useful the other good thing about it is ted was saying about the charging we started off at 100 percent, maybe 9 30 in the morning we take them off the charging dock and at closing at 9 30 or so it's still at 60 70 percent you never have to worry about the charge going down they could last 24 hours so there's really no problems. It's just a win-win. And the busting of the tables and bringing the dirty dishes back, again, the servers are utilizing them so much that it just saves them so much time. They're giving the customers more attention. And again, the customers just really love it. They have conversations with it. They ask questions about it. And it's just really good for everybody there. And it just really saves a lot of time. And instead of having a busser every night that we might have busing tables, the robot can really take that place. So they can do other things like maybe help seat people or anything else. So it really saves on labor and it saves on payment, saves on time. And the customers are getting the, reaping the benefits of it, basically. I love it. And no one's calling out sick. No one's calling in late. Right, Ted? No, <laughs> no. If, if, they if show it does, up for it's gonna, work. It's going to be very strange if he walks off the job. <laughs> the rolls off the job. <laughs> Right, because I know what it's like, right, Ted? I mean, people call in sick, people call in late, people don't show up. It's like, hello, why didn't you call? But you know, it's it's the this it's this era that we're in right now, right? And, and that's the other thing. If you work a waiter eight hours, he's not going to be as tired as he was running back and forth. So, you know, like I said, he'll take, handle, make, I mean, he'll make more tips, be out there at the tables, turn the tables quicker. So it, it, it's a, like I said, it's a win-win situation. Do you really know how to do it right? Like Gary, they, they, they said at first, it's a little, little, you know, different. But once you get it, it, it really, you'll see the benefit of it. No. But so, so, Ted, we've got five minutes left. Is there anything else that you would like to share before we close this show? It has been so eye opening. Mm -hmm. I'm so excited to come out to either Gukaku or Ruby just to enjoy seeing the robots. And, um, you know, I'll take some video guy and I'll post it on the Hawaii Restaurant Association social media because this is something that we need to show. Well, we appreciate that. And like I said, we're here, we're, you know, like we formed this company. There's four of us, uh, Mike Komatani, Trapper Perkins, he's out of California, uh, Frank Sanchez, who worked with me before in Subway. And we formed this company to help the restaurateurs because, like I said, you know, we don't want to be a dying breed. And, you know, I've seen so many restaurants close and, they, you know, uh, people are tired and, you know, we, we, we want, we want this to be a growing breed, restaurateurs, and and see that there is there is a, a you know some sunshine coming you know through the window and there's light at the end. So you know I, I talk to all the restaurant guys and I know every everybody's hitting their head against the wall and you know this can help. So that this is what we're doing. So the, the word you know services you know is, is what we are. So anybody has questions, they can call me, email me, and uh, you know I I can you know send them whatever they need. 
So, awesome. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, gentlemen. As, as I mentioned, um, anyone who is interested in seeing the U.S. Robotic Services um, robots in operation. It's at Ruby Tuesday Moana Loa. Um, you can contact Ted, as he said, contact me at info at hawaiirestaurant.org, and then I can put you in touch with Ted. Again, I am Cheryl Matsuoka, the Executive Director of the Hawaii Restaurant Association, and Hawaii Restaurant Association is the voice of Hawaii's restaurant and food service industry. Please keep in touch. Everyone be safe and have a wonderful holiday season. Thank you. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.